Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to chat about how to love yourself, take care of yourself a little bit more as an introvert living away from your home country by yourself. If you're new here, hi, my name is Bobo and here on this channel, I share my stories, journeys of working and living in London. So without further ado, let's get started. My first point is try to find something that is easy for you to dive in and can keep you away from the outside noises. That for me has been playing the sports that I really like and that has been badminton. I've always found someone who has been doing a certain type of sport for a good period of time attractive not only because they're good at it, they unintentionally um, release their charm while playing the game, but also because of the sense of focus when they're dedicated to such sports. And I want to be that person. I think they're really cool. So I picked up badminton unintentionally while I was playing casually with my friends. And I found myself immersed in the game when I play badminton. I don't think about what happened in the past week. I don't really think about what's going to happen in the future. I just focus on the current game. I enjoy sort of detecting the movement of my opponents, following the movements of the shuttlecock. And I often just feel refreshed after each game and have a clearer mind of thinking. You don't have to do badminton or any other sports. You can also do kicking, painting, hiking, watching a movie, meditating. I think it should be something that can keep you sane and is good for your soul, I guess. So I am excluding everything that is illegal and abusive. Um, so please don't choose those options. If you don't have such a hobby now, I think it's time to go to look for it. I did not grow up training for a specific sport. Like I mentioned earlier, I just spotted badminton when I was playing casually with my friend. And by that time, I really wanted to dedicate it myself to one sport. So I just went up to the coach and said, can I train with you? And that's how it happened. There can definitely more than one thing that you can do that keep you sane. And I think your intuition will tell you what you prefer to do to the other options. The second thing that personally worked for me is to customize your stuff. I'm not talking about adding your full name or initials to everything that you own. I'm talking about to make things more suitable for yourself. You might ask what is more suitable and in my definition, I think being more suitable is more fit for the purpose for you. Additionally, to show or represent a little bit of your personality. I am an intuition-led person and as an intuition-led person, I prefer to add a bit of personal touch to the stuff that I own. That could be simple as adding a pin to your tote bag, to your pencil case, or like, you know, adding a sticker to a laptop, etc, etc. Also, make some changes to clothing. So for example, I bought a dress from Arcade a few weeks back. I really liked the pattern. However, I felt like it was a long sleeve dress, but I felt like the long sleeve is a bit redundant. So I went to the tailor and made it like a short sleeve. It make me feel a bit more summery. So now wear it as a summer dress. And that made that dress different in the sense that I bought it in the same store as a U, but now I made this personal change to reflect how I would use it. The next time that I picked up the dress, it will help me revise the feeling of me going to the tailor, putting that extra effort in to make that specific item more suitable for myself. Kind of like revise the little happiness. Uh, I know it's going a little bit abstract now, but I feel it that way to revise that little happiness that I created for myself. And that would just encourage me to use that specific item a little bit more. And I really enjoyed that feeling. I felt that great. Another extension of this is interior design. You will probably hear the saying that home is the place that reflects someone's personality. I completely agree with that. I think to curate a home into a shape that I really like, to collect the memorable pieces from places that I've traveled and from people that means a lot to me is a enjoyment of mine. And I think that's what makes a home special. I actually think that fits exactly the definition of customization because those are the items that is only special to you, and reflects your personality and only belongs to you. The next point that I want to say is to learn to watch, observe and sculpt your body and become your own it girl. 
I'm not sure how you feel, but when I scroll the social media and saw losing this much weight in this many days or clear your skin in this many days, it creates a sense of anxiety for me. Or should I say, it only creates a hopeful feeling for a short period of time. What I come to realize is that everyone's body is different. You live under different weathers, you have different lifestyles, and that naturally means your body will react to certain things in a different way. The example of that is gymming. There have been a period where I swipe from social media, saw those Instagram models, and I want to be like them. They look so good in everything that they wear. And I have followed the workout videos on YouTube and it did have some results. However, I found myself not knowing what exactly I was doing and over criticizing my body when I skipped the workout for one or two days and that was not really healthy. If I were to do it again, I would observe my body first and, and I see where I want to change. For example, do I want to lose fat? Do I want to widen my shoulders? What's the target that I want to achieve? and make that target as specific as possible. After you have that, you'll have a more structured approach to the gym routine and then you will have more targeted videos to do when I go search on YouTube. How this approach is different from my previous approach was that I think I'm staying on the more positive side of the road whereas in the previous one, I almost felt like I was reaching a goal that is quite distant and quite perfect and I always felt I'm not good enough. For this mindset or approach change, I felt like I was able to naturally motivate myself to do certain things. I am more specific with my ask. I understand myself better and I know what I want better. And plus with the help of algorithm, I get pushed more contents that are suitable for my need and I found that great. The next thing I want to talk about is to stay away from the people or the things that do not bring you energy because I think to keeping the little things that do not bring your energy at all kind of drag your energy down in the long term. Throw away the expired receipts, throw away your old batteries, throw away the underwear that is out of shape or and donate the clothes that you don't expect yourself to wear anymore. You don't have to do it in one go, I just do it when I feel like doing it and that definitely helps me live a neater life in the sense that my sight is cleaner because I don't get to see them when I walk around the house and that feels great. The second last point that I want to talk about is to be confident of what you like. This is actually from my personal experience. I used to love Latin dancing when I was small but I, I did not receive much of a positive response from my parents and so I kind of dropped it then. I think as a child, you would need guidance from your parents in terms of what is right and what is wrong. They will also need to tell you the importance of persistence and resilience. However, whether it is suitable for you, whether it is something that you like is your call. I always think intuition plays a big part of it as you will naturally know if you are drawn to something or not. Comparing this to my first point where I mentioned you can find your hobby, I think this is something kind of just comes from your childhood memories. For me, Latin dancing has been that although I not do this now, I still find myself drawn to those short videos, I'm still interested in those dance competitions and I think the calling is still there. So what I'm trying to say is if you know you like something, go for it. It doesn't really matter what you like really. It doesn't really matter whether what you like is mainstream or niche enough. The fact that you're willing to invest yourself to obtain a certain knowledge in that niche already makes you a cute enough person. Whew, I've talked so much. So here comes to my last point. My last point is to stay focused. Whilst you're into something, you will hear a lot of sounds from the outside. It could be from your parents, from your friends, from the strangers that does not even know you. I used to think stay focused means block outside noises, but I don't think that way now. I think stay focused means you're invested, you're dedicated, while as blocking outside noises just mean you're stubborn. I think it is important to learn from other people's lessons, but overthinking and overanalyzing certain things will just trap yourself in your own feelings. So if you have weighed your options and pros and cons, 
and you think that something is worthwhile, investing your time, energy, and money, then I would say just keep on doing it. All right, that's the end of the video. If you resonate with something that I said above, or if you have something else to share, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm trying to reach my watch hour goal in the next six months. So if you could comment self care in the comment section below to help this channel grow and to let more people be able to see in this video, I would really appreciate it. It's a beautiful day here in London and it's a topic of self care. So I come outside, sit in the park and do this video. I hope you like this new backdrop and I will see you next time.